So I'm going to be speaking about something that uh, a lot of people seem to be confused about it. And at some point of my life also, I didn't understand it fully, even though the experience on the ground was different. So uh, I hope that you're ready. If you're ready, just type fire, fire as many times as you can. And I believe we are ready to roll. And I believe God is going to do something uh, spectacular and something so incredible Amen. that will permit us to go to another dimension and another level in the Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you're ready, just type fire. I see on, on YouTube people already doing the fire. And I pray that more people also, thank you, Auntie Roses, uh, more people also will, will get on the, on the, what's it called, on the train of, uh, of fire so that we can fulfill what God wants us to fulfill. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So this is very necessary for you to understand. And the reason why it will be so beneficial for you to understand it is that it will remove the myth from the truth. Mm. You see, truth is such an important thing in life, but you can never know the truth until you have experienced lies mm -hmm. and you have experienced deception. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You will never really understand the value of truth. Mm -hmm. You see, somebody who has enjoyed tricking their way through, through life, when they definitely hit the wall and realize that what they thought was the way to navigate life is taken from them, they oftentimes crash and burn because the trickery doesn't work anymore. Wow. Mm -hmm. I pray that this message will really enter into your heart and I pray that there will be an unlocking in the spirit Amen. that will come upon you by reason of listening to this. And this message is called Embracing Pain. Amen. Amen. Embracing Pain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, ask us to read this verse and then I will expound on this to help you understand something. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <coughs> God is so good. Amen. Amen. God is so amazing. Yes. Amen. First Peter chapter 4 verse 19. First Peter chapter 4 verse 19. Amen. First Peter 4 verse 19. Yes. And it says, mm -hmm. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him mm -hmm. in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. One more time. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God mm -hmm. commit the keeping of their souls to Him mm -hmm. in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. One more time. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God mm -hmm. commit the keeping of their souls to Him mm -hmm. in well-doing as unto a faithful Creator. You know, as, as a believer, it's very important to ask questions. Amen. A child of God who doesn't ask question is, uh, questions is already affected and is already vulnerable to Satan. Mm. Wow. Questions are the bedrock of maturity in God. Amen. Because God doesn't want you to believe something without understanding it. Amen. Contrary to what people think, they just say blind faith. There is no such thing as blind faith. Amen. It does not exist. There's no such thing as a leap of faith. Mm -mm. Let me tell you what people think is faith. Help us. People think faith is I act on something and I believe that it will work, that God will make it work. That is not faith. That is you doing you mm -hmm. and hoping that God is backing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Faith is solely based on what God said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If God says it, I believe it, I do it, mm -hmm. I prosper. Mm -hmm. Faith is taking God for his word, mm -hmm. taking God by his word. Mm -hmm. That's what faith is. Amen. If I do something in hopes that it works, it means I am out of line with what God wants. Mm. So I am believing that he will also accept what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. But if I act on his word, then I'm acting on faith. Okay. That will not be a leap of faith because God is faithful. Right. A leap of faith it means I'm taking a chance, hoping that it works. Yeah. 
I don't know if this makes sense. We hear you. Chances is not faith. That's good. Faith is God has said it, I will do it because he said so, and I know because he said it, it will work. Right. That is faith. Faith is simply holding on to God's word because what he says is not a man that he should lie. So there is no guessing in it. It's a sure thing that if I do it, it will work because God's word is truth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why is it important for you to ask questions? Have you ever asked yourself why the Holy Spirit is a comforter? God is saying he will comfort you. I will send you another comforter. Why is God comforting you? Mm. It means there is a okay. part of God that permits pain. Yeah, that's good. That makes wow. sense. That makes sense. God doesn't say he will shield you from pain. Mm -mm. He said he will comfort you through pain. That's helping. Comfort is not the absence of pain. Comfort comes to help you deal with pain. The presence of comfort, it's soothing, a little soothing while you're going through pain. It doesn't mean pain has been taken away. Okay. Is somebody listening to me? We hear you. We hear there you. is a reason why the Holy Spirit is called a comforter. So why is it that God permits pain? Because trials and pain are two completely different things. Break it down. I wish more people would share it and more thumbs up and more thumbs up because this is definitely going to bless somebody and Amen. it's definitely going to change somebody's life. Amen. Amen. It will change your life and get you to where God wants you to be. Amen. According to the scripture that we read from Peter, 1 Peter, Peter is saying, let them that suffer according to the will of God. Wait, so God wants me to have pain. As well. So there is pain that is according to the will of God. Aye, aye, aye. There is pain that is legislated by God. Wow. Aye. So there is pain that God permits. There is pain that is caused by our own foolish choices. Okay. Pain permitted by God. Pain that is permitted, that is that not permitted, but has Cause come into our life us, yeah. as a result of our poor choices. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't need to discuss our poor choices because we all know that our poor choices can cause us pain unnecessarily. It means that pain will not benefit us with anything. Ah, my sister, Prophetess Lillian, God bless you. Is, is somebody catching this? So our choices will cause us pain, not because God wants it to. We will only learn not to do that, but it will not mature us in the sense of God. Is that making sense? Yes, yes, yes. There's pain that you go through that just tells you, hey, don't delay your destiny by walking with those people. But those are lessons that you could have learned from people around you anyway. That you didn't have to go through. Okay. Okay. But there is pain. Is the air of Auntie Roses. But there is pain that God himself ordains for you. Mm. Wow. Okay. Amen. I know this is not a very uh, a catchy subject, this is what we mean. but it's important for you to know because if you know it, you are delivered. Amen. You're free. Amen. And when I talk about pain, I'm not only talking about physical pain. I'm talking about emotional pain. I'm talking about psychological pain. So there are things like I was talking to uh, to my uh, 
little sister this morning, I was talking to Benny, and we were talking about things to do with life. And she asked me a very interesting question about, I don't know what we were watching, and she said, uh, wow, I would never want to be in a marriage and then my husband dies, that would be very, very painful. I said, that is true. It would be a terrible thing, and we don't pray for that. But it's something that you have to expect. It can happen. Because part of the marriage vows makes it plain that that can happen. We don't look forward to it. But if we don't prepare mentally for it, understanding what marriage is, what can happen within it, if something like that happens, then your children will not have an anchor. That's good. So it's called being sober. Anyone that hasn't experienced pain has not lived. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Say that again. Ooh. Anyone that has not experienced pain hasn't lived. Wow. Now let me tell you why you need to embrace pain. I wish more people would do thumbs up. Let's get more thumbs up going. Let me tell you why God constitutes pain. Number one, pain. Pain is the trading power in the spirit. Hmm. Okay. Help us. You see, when you see trouble in your life, it means God is about to elevate you. Right. But pain is the trading power in the spirit. Wow. Kingdom come, thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing to so many people. I wish somebody could hear me. Pain is the trading power in the spirit. Mm. So anyone who cannot embrace pain, anyone that cannot embrace pain can never trade in the spirit. Help us. The sacrifice of Jesus was in the pain that he was going to experience, okay. not in the cross. Mm. So many people died on the cross before Jesus, and many f people died after. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the difference was Jesus suffered pain not for himself but for mm -hmm. others. Okay, that's good. Wow. That's good. We hear you. So his pain was the cost, was the price tag mm -hmm. on salvation. Wow. Mm. You know death is rest. When you die, you have been separated from any pain. Right. It's only painful if you experience hell. Mm -hmm. Then you are going to a terrible place. If you're going to hell. But to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So giving up the spirit, it means you have rested. That's why when people die, they say rest in peace. So dying is resting. So what mattered for Jesus was the pain he was going to experience until the moment is permitted to give up his spirit. Have you ever asked yourself why so many bulls were being slaughtered? Were those bulls enjoying it? Somebody didn't hear what I said. More thumbs up on YouTube, more thumbs up on, on, uh, on, on Facebook. When they will take a lamb and slaughter it, the lamb will be crying. For the blood to be spilled, there has to be pain. 
Mm. There's no blood that has ever been released without pain. Mm. So when you pray, God is looking for, uh, what is it called? God is looking for a sweet smelling savor, right? Yeah. A sweet scent that will arise. But that sweet scent is always provoked by pain. Sheesh. Wow. Yikes. Wow. Is somebody listening to me? I'm listening. Yeah. Trying to catch it. Austin Molly Makota, God bless you, in the UK. So God is looking for a sweet-smelling savor, but that sweet-smelling savor is coming from somebody's pain. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Whether it's a lamp, <laughs> whether it's your giving. You see, I always tell people this, you haven't given until you feel pain. Mm. That's ah, true. if it doesn't hurt, you haven't sacrificed. That's actually true. That's good. Baba Bernard, we honor you, Papa. Bless you, sir. So pain is what God is looking for. Because that pain is the price. Mm -hmm. To be patient can be painful. Mm, yeah. yep. Patience can be painful. When everybody else is being promoted, everybody else is being lifted, everybody else's life is changing, but you are still on the waiting bench. That's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. It hurts so bad. Yeah. That's good. But the pain awakens you to another reality about God. Mm. It unlocks portals within you that can touch God better than anybody else can touch God. Wow. You see, the Bible says something about the Lord Jesus. It says this, it says that, for we, have a, we, we do not have a high priest who cannot be touched by our infirmities. Mm. The man Jesus has the greatest access to God, who is God reincarnated in the flesh. Because of the amount of pain he went through. Mm -hmm. So the greater the pain, the greater the access if you persevere. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay. okay. Because pain was designed to break the flesh. Right, 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 right. That's the Pain was designed to break the flesh. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's deep. Because whoever has not broken the flesh wow. cannot see in the spirit, cannot touch in the spirit, cannot move in the spirit, wow. cannot be effective in the spirit. Mm. Wow, but remember, to break the flesh, you don't need to die. Okay. Somebody who has died has definitely broken the flesh, but has broken the flesh to the point of it cannot be useful. Right. But if you're going to be in the flesh and serve God, the flesh has to be broken. If the flesh has to be broken, it cannot be broken without pain. That makes sense. And the greatest lesson to the, pain, to the flesh is that the flesh has to experience pain and embrace it. And the moment he understands that pain is part of living, Jesus. the flesh is changed. When a mother is giving birth, Labor is painful. Mm. Childbirth is painful. Yeah. Raising a child is painful. The first breath that that child, when the child comes out of the mother, the child comes out of pain. Mm -hmm. The second thing is when the lungs open for the first breath, it is painful. The doctor has to smack the child to open up the child's lung. It is painful. Wow. Wow. When teeth are growing, it is painful. When the child is growing, the bones begin to stretch and grow. It is painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When you have to go to work, it is painful. There is no separating pain from life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. Heesh. That's good. 
The only time there will be no pain is when we enter glory. It says there will be no more tears, there will be no pain, there will be no more suffering. But with this life, if you don't embrace pain, mm -hmm. you are simply postponing right. your elevation, wow. yeah. your spiritual sensitivity, the power to trade with God. You are simply postponing it and delaying your own growth. Wow. My God. Even in the world, they understand this truth. Suffer now, enjoy later. That's true. Whoever pays the price now, the price is painful. If you look at boxes, they always say, sweat, blood, and tears. Mm -hmm. To mm. be the best, you will suffer, whether it's in business or whatever. There's a price that has to be paid. Mm -hmm. That's good. Real good. Anyone that is running from pain, is rushing to the grave. Yikes. Wow. There are things that you look in life and you, and you ask yourself, why? But why would the Holy Spirit be a comforter if you will not experience pain? It's common sense. Why would the Lord call himself our comforter? Yet we avoid pain. Yet we run away from pain. There is suffering. There is pain that is ordained by God. Job's pain was ordained by God. But Job embraced it. And because of the embracing, he was elevated. Jesus embraced the cross. Jesus urges us to carry the cross. Why? Because the power to trade in the spirit is in pain. There is no sacrifice that is without pain. Teaching good purpose. You see, so many people will see me sitting here. You see Dr. Elias looking good. You don't know the pain that he has taken to be here. Yeah. And I was talking to my little sister and I was telling her, every time God wants to promote me, I go through major pain. Because it is the passport and the visa to climb higher spiritually. Have you ever met anyone that has succeeded without sacrifices? No. They would have sacrificed family time. They would have sacrificed this. They would have sacrificed that. That's the only way you go up. Yes, that's true. But anybody who chooses not to sacrifice... they have already set themselves up for major destruction. Today I told, yesterday I told my son, uh, from today, I'm going to give you a job at church <laughs> because I want you to learn work ethic. Amen. Let it be normal to have to work hard. Amen. Let it be normal to know that Pain can be there, but it doesn't mean you quit. Amen. So my son, who has everything that he could ever want, he's busy cleaning fridges in the church right now. Anyone wants true, lasting ability to get anything from God, embrace pain. I wish somebody mm -hmm. could hear me. If this is making sense to you, please uh, hit the thumbs up. Hit the thumbs up. Amen. So pain is the ability to trade spiritually.
Number two. Pain constituted by God or pain licensed by God is meant to teach you dependence on God. Amen. Amen. Very much so the truth. Amen. 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 Pain teaches you dependence on God. Amen. Pain teaches you dependence on God. Mm -hmm. Many of you don't know how to depend on God because you haven't suffered mm. to the point that there is no one who can help you except oh God. God. Eesh, that's good. I believe that we are very soft Christians today. Teach. Don't, don't hate me, I'm just telling you the truth. Amen. Teach, teach. <laughs> we are very soft Christians today. And the reason why we are very soft believers today is that we are living in a time whereby there's some comfort to us so there's no need to push. Mm. There is no need for us to rest in God. There's this, uh, uh, um, there's this, uh, I, anyone who knows me close knows that I love debates. And I love to see, uh, what's it called, um, different kinds of debates, especially religious debates. There's this uh, apologist, a Christian uh, apologist, his, his name was Nebil. He was a Christian guy that served the Lord faithfully and he died of cancer. And I remember watching his video while he was in his home. And he was in bed and he said, the doctor said that there's nothing that they can do for me. So they've transferred me to, what is it called, pa 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 palet paletti or something, when, when, you're, when you're ready to die. What is it called? Palliative. Palliative said they have transferred me to palliative at my home for me to basically die because they said my body is dying. And he said this while he was on the, on the camera, he said, I still believe that God can heal me if we pray together. And he said, but you know what? I'm going, and he said, let's pray. He said, Father, I believe even now that you can heal me. I believe it with all my heart right now. You can heal me. But even if you choose not to, I still trust you. Wow. I cried watching that. Wow. This is a man that served God faithfully. Why would God permit him to go out like that? Mm. You see, in the flesh, carnal people, Carnal people think there is a good death. Death is just death to God. But the pain that you go through, is it pushing you closer to God or away from God? Mm. You see, God can only give the lessons. What you choose to learn is up to you, not up to him. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because whether you learn it or not, it doesn't change him. Job became even more dependent on God. Job became even more dependent on God because of the pain that he went through. Some of you right now, your husband may have left you, your wife may have left you, your children may have turned against you, your brother or sister, your, your, whoever it is around you, may have turned against you. You may take it like, ah. You may take it like, okay. People just don't love me. I'm going through spirit of rejection. No. Some of the people leaving you, it's because God wants it. Amen. Why should you have people if you do? Think about it. Is it better to have God or people? God. Wow. Period. Yes. Do you want a God that you spend eternity with? Or do you want people yes. 
who you spend a short time with that are not dependable, that can forsake you, that can turn against you. What is it that you want? Pain, pain is so much part of this life than you can ever think or imagine. Some of you go through a certain season of feeling some type of way. You withdraw from God. So God looks at you and says, why should I bless you if you're not ready for me to be Lord whether you're in pain or in good times? The church is married to Christ, but one of the vows of marriage is for better, for worse. worse. But some of you, when worse comes, you're ready to jump ship. Mm. Mm. Mm -mm. So is pain drawing you closer to God or away from God? Pain is designed to bring you to total dependence on God. Amen. 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 Some of you, the moment right now, the things you're going through, if you learn to depend on God, they will go away. Wow. Their purpose is to show you to get close to God. Amen. Wow. Amen. Permanently. Yes. Yes. Not yes, seasonably, yes. but permanently. Ooh, not seasonally. Oh, Lord, I just want a breakthrough. But if the breakthrough comes now, Next week, you'll be nowhere to be seen next to God. Oh, so man. God will let your pain last a little longer. Oof. So that you understand that even though I get breakthrough today, something else may happen tomorrow. Am I close to God? If there is something we can learn from Job, mm -hmm. is that it doesn't matter how close you are to God, pain will always be there. That's true. So your faithfulness to God does not take away pain. Mm. But mm. your faithfulness to God must equal dependence on God. Wow. Because in this life, anything can happen. Yes. Anything can happen. The greater your pain tolerance, the stronger your endurance. Mm. That's good. Mm. Some of you cannot resist the devil because you've never gone through pain. How can you resist something that you have never suffered? Imagine the pain Abraham went through waiting on God to have a child. Until he was an old man, then God comes and says, okay, now I'm giving you a child. Think about the things that Sarah went through. Psychologically, we are here saying praise God, faithfully serving God, faithfully doing this, but... When God announced, I'm going to make you a father of many nations and your wife Sarah will have a child, is when the problems increased. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That's good. That's good. You see, there are certain things that is not a matter of prayer. It's a matter of understanding. Yes, yes, yes. yes. When you comprehend something changes inside of you. That's so good. Yep, yep. There are certain changes that you can never achieve simply by praying. It depends on what you want. If you say, God, give me strength to run. Ah. Uh, God will bring you pain to see if you will run. Because that's the only way you bring strength. How, do you gain st how can you have cardio without running? How can you have cardio without cycling? Mm -hmm. You have to do, you, you cannot have endurance without actually being pushed beyond your limits. Yeah. Then your body naturally adjusts to be able to adapt. Yes, it does. You see, we were created to adapt. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. I remember when God was raising me up. By God's grace, God has always given me resources. But I realized the more resources I acquired, the greater my bills also were. They didn't actually lower, mm. they also increased. More money, Amen. more problems. Yeah. 
Not that I couldn't handle it, but I was like, ah. I realized that even the price for the level that I'm in is more. Mm. That's good. Is your pain drawing you close to God or away from God? Number three, pain teaches you humility. Amen. Amen. Somebody who has never suffered will never be humble. That's good. And what is pain? Pain means you have to be in a good position and then you're drowned in a place you've never been. Wow. There are people who are born in poverty. They are comfortable in poverty because they have never experienced something else. If they experience something good and then go back to poverty, then it will test their will. Should they kill still to be wealthy or will they depend on God to rise up? Being born in a painful situation doesn't mean that it hurts you. It means that your pain tolerance is greater. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. Your plateau, your beginning determines your pain level. Somebody who has been born, I took my son when I was in Kenya, I took him to, to a place called Kibra. And we were driving with our guys and we were looking at the place. He could not believe kids lived in that condition. But for those kids, that's not painful. That's all they know. Right, right. So their pain will come from something else, not that condition. My God. That's because they are, comes, they are already accustomed to that. Yeah, that makes sense. That is why your pain will be different from somebody else. But you, when you understand pain... You will be humble because you know pain is pain, even though the plateau is different. Yeah. That's good. Somebody from a third world country will come to America and say, ah, you guys don't know what pain is. That's because he doesn't know the kind of pain you're experiencing. Yeah. He will undermine what you're going through, not understanding that if they were in the same position, what you're going through will hurt even more. Wow. Is this making sense? Yes, yes. yes. Pain teaches you humility because it doesn't matter if you are a prophet. It doesn't matter if you're an apostle. It doesn't matter if you're a bishop. It doesn't even matter if you're the son of God. Wow. Pain comes to all of us. Jesus. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Pain comes to all of us. Pain humbles us. If you know you can suffer like the next person, you will always be kind to people because you know that people's burdens is not. <laughs> Pain is the biggest equalizer in life. That's good. Yes. Am I talking to myself or am I talking to you. somebody? Yeah. You see, just knowing this changes how you pray. Yeah. It, removes, it, it removes pride from your prayer completely. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pain teaches humility of the highest order. Pain teaches such great humility. That is why it says Jesus took upon himself the form of a servant, humbled himself. Why? Because the moment you enter into flesh, 
suffering becomes your neighbor. Hmm. That's good. That's good. And the Lord Jesus said something interesting that we forget. He said, the servant is no greater than the master. If the master suffered this, you will definitely suffer it. You will overcome, but you will suffer it. You see, what you are learning today, he's, it's igniting you to make sure you never fail. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Fatima Fayad, can you save that question of us from uh, YouTube? So just uh, remember it so that I can, I can answer. Now listen to this last one. Or second last one. Pain teaches or strengthens our pursuit of God. Depending on God and chasing after God is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Help us. Hello. Hello. Can somebody hear me somewhere? What is the level of your pursuit of God? What is the level of your pursuit of God? What is the level of your pursuit of God? I don't think people can hear me. What is your level? What is your level of pursuit of God? What is it? You see, when you understand that God is all that you have, you chase after him differently. You don't just depend on him, but you will never be satisfied. You will want to make sure you are always with him at all time, every time. As he moves, you also move. Amen. David was a man after God's heart. It means he chased after his heart. Because of the things he suffered, he knew the best place to be oh, is always good. to be after God. Amen. Heaven and earth will pass, but his word will never pass. Pain teaches you to chase after God. Amen. Amen. You see, some of you just need God. You don't chase after him. You are chasing after God is because you want something. I need something. Once I get it, I've relaxed. I don't, so your fasting is not because you are, want to know where he is at all times. Your fasting is because I need breakthrough. My this is because I need that. My that is because I need this. But the moment that stuff is there, it's cool. You see, sometimes when I'm prophesying to people, when I'm prophesying to people, you notice something strange. Sometimes I won't pray for people. I'll tell them, go fix it with your mother. Go fix it with your husband. Go fix it with your wife. There's, a, there's an amazing papa that was sick on, on, was it Sunday? Thursday. And I told papa, listen, I'm seeing a woman going, speaking against you spiritually because of the pain that was caused between the two of you. He said, yes, me and my wife. I asked him, where is your wife? He said, oh, my wife uh, is here. I'm in Washington, D.C. Are you guys together? No. He said, can you just, you don't have to get back to, make peace. Because what you are suffering is because of this. You are a very tough man. Make peace. The moment he fixed that, I prayed for him. 
There are some people who tell them, listen, you almost died. God saved you. Go fix it with God, please. Because if you don't fix it, there is no prayer I can pray for you to save you. Why are these things important? Are you a God chaser? Are you seeking his hand or are you seeking him? When you realize that material things can't quench anything, people can't satisfy anything, you need pain for you to understand those things don't satisfy. You need to be in a place of brokenness. Then you taste and see that the Lord is good. Then you will chase after him. You will realize that that's all that matters. So your pursuit will always be to go deeper, to be better, to be closer. Kingdom Come asked a very good question. Can you keep that question also because I'll answer it in a question. I'll give one last, uh, one last thing and then I'll answer people's questions because I know this is a very touching subject. Here's uh, a last one. Is this, is this helping somebody? Is this helping somebody? Yes. This is very sobering. Yes. Yes. Pain teaches you to live for God. Mm. Pain teaches you to live for God. Let me explain it. The rich young ruler came to Jesus, our precious Lord. He came to the King of Glory and said, um, what must I do to be saved? Jesus told him, go sell everything and follow me. Do you know why that man didn't want to sell everything? He found comfort in the things that he has. When your comfort is in things, you can't live for God. When the pain of loss of material things, of family members, and all these things where you can lose everything, you realize that it's better to live for God because these things are temporary every, anyway. Yeah. The value of things just falls off. Mm -hmm. Then it makes God give you everything because he knows that your treasures are not in your things. You see, many of you, you, you go into depression, you go into all these things because of one simple mistake. The Bible says, where your heart shall be there, your treasures will be also. So if your heart is in material things, when they fail, even your treasures have been lost, so you're going to despair. But if your heart is where God is, you will live for God, you will want God because you know that is where everything that you are also is located in. So you will not fear of, the fear of losing things will not be there. There is total security because you are in him. Pain makes one live for God. Amen. Are you going to live for God? Are you going to live for God? Some people want to live for God because they're afraid of hell. That's not living for God. Living for God, it means turning your back on the world. What does it mean to turn your back on the world? It means the things that moves people in the world no longer moves you. You are moved by him. So you are only living the life that he wants you to live. If he sends you to Vietnam to preach, will you go? If he sends you in the Middle East, if he sends you to this place, if he sends you to that place, will you do it? When you live for him, you know where your treasures are. You will not fear to do any of these things. Amen. But the reason why you have no ability to live for him, it means that if he needs you for something, you will choose not to do it or to do it. It's simply because of one thing. 
you've not enjoyed the pain that shows you that everybody else is just passing. Uh, Mariam Wilson, could you, uh, can you uh, um, get that also on YouTube? That's a, uh, I'll, I'll try and help her. So in finishing, remember this is a message of victory. Amen. It is not a gloomy message. It's only a gloomy message if you're in the flesh. Let me, let me say something, just to try and help somebody understand something. When my brother Christian was sick the first time, I fought for him so much by God's grace. And there were other people who were also there. He was doing amazing. Everything was going according to plan. Then all of a sudden everything turned left. Ah pushed in prayer, he will be restored, then he will go bad. He'll be restored, then he will go bad. Then one day God tells me, okay, I'm taking him. Ah! Lord, here I am healing people's sicknesses. You're sending me to raise people off wheelchairs, to heal people from cancers, brain cancer, terminal cancer, you name it, God is doing it. Why don't you want to help my own person? Why don't you want to rescue my own brother? You feel it is better to take him. Why? If my dependence or if the lordship of the Lord Jesus in my life was based off only good things and not decisions that I don't understand from him, mm. then I wouldn't be preaching. What's the point? Mm. Is this making sense? Yes. What would be the point? The prayers that were offered, the fastings that were offered, the battling that was offered, every advantage, and God says, no, I choose this way. Mm -hmm. So many people have gone on to be with the Lord close to me, my parents and things like that. Nothing hurt more than this one. Mm. Nothing hurt more than this one. bad. But I looked at God and I said, Lord, you know better. What do I know? I'm just dust. Comfort me through this. And there was a deeper understanding of the things of the Spirit that came unto me, simply because of realizing anyway, we didn't come to this world to stay. Mm -hmm. We are going through. Mm -hmm. He chose how long this one will live. Yeah. He knows why he's doing that. Anyway, him going to heaven is better. I'm being selfish, wanting my brother to be here, yet he's not whole and he can't live the life that he wants to live. Right. It's torment. So if he chooses to take him, he can heal him. But if he thinks it's better to take him, who am I? He, does he belong to me? That's good. I'll add one last one. Pain teaches you to let go. The pain you feel when you're hurt is telling you let go. <laughs> wow. It's not saying hold on to it. Yeah. Some of you have taken a sword and you've left it inside of you, yet the pain is saying pull it out. Yeah. You know, I want to feel it more, how could they? So you're wow. killing yourself instead of pulling it out. Yeah, let it go. Jesus. They backstab me uh, instead of saying, ah, you know what, let me let go of that situation, let me go. You keep poking that same yeah. if it's taken off you put it back in ah no this one yeah. how could yeah. they so you're killing yourself wow. 
you're killing yourself, you're hurting yourself. <laughs> In the name of pain instead of letting it go. Hallelujah. Pain says let it go. Hello. Hello, Hello are you there? Yeah. Amen. There are people who are in love with pain. If they don't feel pain, ah. <laughs> <laughs> I just remembered Bishop Ray well when he used to be a depressed man. <laughs> hey, God, God is good. Amen. I remember, I remember Cloud used to look like, you know, those, uh, 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 what's it called, Geico commercials of the cavemen. Ah, that's how my son used to look like when I met him. Mm. I remember the first time we were having a conversation, he said, I actually <laughs> <laughs> say, you know, I looked at that thing and it hurt and the pain felt good. I say, hey, hey, no, no, pain should not feel good. <laughs> this spirit needs to get away from you. But some of you, you enjoy pain. How many years has it been, Cloud? Uh, that was 2014. 2014. Yeah. Ha, ah, look at God. Amen. Over eight years now. Ha, yeah. ah, God is good. Amen. Stop being addicted to pain. Let pain go. It doesn't serve you, it kills you. Some of you, you have hypertension, blood pressure, all those things. Satan is using it because you opened, it, you opened your flesh. Some people will pray, but they just got heartbroken. They will play the saddest music to get even more heartbroken. Mm, you're attacking me. Now you're attacking me. I don't appreciate that, Papa. I don't appreciate So they can really cry. And, wow. You know? All right. Let's cut the live, folks. <laughs> that pain feels so good right oh, now. Repeat. Then they remember, they put that one song, you know, mm -hmm. on repeat. Mm -hmm. So that you could, they can stab themselves even more. <laughs> Lord Jesus, it's Thank a fire. Thank the Lord for grace. <laughs> but what does it serve? Nothing. That Drake be hitting now. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly, that's it. Um, break my heart. <laughs> but all these things, all they do is they just destroy us. They don't take us anywhere. Wow. Oh, that's good. Help us, Jesus. Okay, let me get to the questions real quick. Amen. Amen. Okay, let me hear the questions. Did you save them? Yes. Okay, let me hear them. Okay, is it on? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, mm -hmm. Fatima asked, if you stumble while going through the pain of waiting, do you delay God's elevation or can the elevation get put back on track when you repent and get back on track with God? Ah, God is always ready. When we repent, he's ready to accept us. But that doesn't mean we avoid the lesson. Mm. Amen. Amen. In the school of the Holy Spirit, nobody can skip a class. Mm. Mm. That's good. Did you hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's good. In the school of the Holy Spirit, there is no skipping classes. Yes. Every class you dodge, you come back to it. Every lesson you miss, you will learn it again. Wow. And you will never go to the next class until you pass that test.
What's the next one? Um, Kingdom Come MK, he said, he said, Prophet, how long should we accept pain and how do we separate slash discern the source of the pain, whether it is of God? That's a very good. Ask it again. That's a very good question. I want people to hear it. How long should we accept pain and how do we separate slash discern the source of the pain, whether it is of God? Mm. Number one, when it is something from God, it means that you're standing right before God. Because remember, God doesn't bring, bring pain because you've done wrong. Mm. Because God doesn't punish you. Right. God can only chastise you. God can only discipline you. But he will never cause you in terms of put you through suffering and pain because you messed up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's not the psychology of Elohim. Mm. If you just beat your child without showing them why they are getting punished, you are an abuser. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So when God is the one that is bringing something to you, you'll be so perfect be before God and you'll not understand where this came from. Mm. You see, the friends of Job, they were finding a reason why Job was going through what right. he was going through. Right, yeah. Right, right. yeah, Job is saying, listen, I did nothing before God. Mm -hmm. Zero dot com. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nada dot com. I did nothing before Jesus. I didn't do anything. So every time you would try to say that, there will be, Shh, Job, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. <laughs> nice. That was good. You messed up. But I didn't, Shh, I'm speaking. <laughs> Job, I'm speaking. Okay. Smile. I, I'm speaking. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> some people caught it, some people didn't. Nice. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. So when you are in right standing with God and things come, you know it is God permitting it. Mm -hmm. Not your shortcomings. Because God's goal of bringing things to you is not to destroy you, but it's to elevate you. Amen. Hello. Hello. So that is how you discern whether it is God or not. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How long should you stay in pain? Well, pain is designed to be there until you learn the lesson. Mm. Mm -hmm. Wow, Jeez. deep. That's good. The length of your pain is based on the lesson. Are you getting it or not? You see, some people need to just try something and if it doesn't work out, they know that they need to change. Mm. Some people keep insisting on the same thing. Yeah. Seven times it's not working, but they're still doing it, causing themselves unnecessary pain. Mm -hmm. So whether it is by you or by God, it's still the ending of it will be based on your own decision mm -hmm. of learning or not. Mm. Like if you were in a wrong relationship before, you should never fall into another wrong relationship because you should be wiser. Right. There are questions you didn't ask before you ask. You'll be more investigative. Right. You'll be more, you pick up clues. You'll observe better. There are things that you look into better than you did mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Why would you do that? Because you don't want to be in the same place again. Mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody's getting me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Any other question? 
Um, yes, Miriam Wilson said, uh, Papa, my husband was shot in the face the other day by a family member. Like He's by with a gun or what? Uh, she just says, was shot in the face the other okay. day by a family member. Mm -hmm. He is still recovering from being hit by a car. I feel the spirit of death is chasing him. Please, how can this be stopped? Number one, what is family? Blood makes relatives. Mm. So Loyalty makes family. Yes. Anyone who is looking for your head is not f your family. Jesus said, Jesus said it like this. He said, those who are my brothers and sisters are those who do my word and obey it. First of all, I'm very sorry about what your husband is going through and we need to pray for him. It just means the people around you are the wrong people. It means you need to change where you are. Because if a family member will pull out a gun on you, that's not family member, that's just a relative. Right. I don't know if you can hear me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory, Glory be, to, be God. to God. Is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Yes. So if you are around the wrong people, you need to move away from these people. Right. If they are, would want to harm you even if you are disagreeing, that's not family. So it means you've remained and named and dubbed people family that should not be. Wow. Right. Family will fight you for your elevation, but never to kill you or mm -hmm. to harm you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Any other question? Yes. Okay. So not too long ago, I think this conversation could help when we talked about how Someone in your family can be elevating and doing well. Meanwhile, everyone else is like suffering and mm -hmm. going through pain and things like that. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do to really help. No. How does someone deal with that? Like watching others they love go through pain. But like, do they just keep praying? Do they? King Kingdom Come. I don't know if you're on I Instagram. Can you message me so that we talk mm -hmm. on, on, uh, on uh, YouTube? Kingdom Come. Uh, please message me on IG so that we can talk. If you can, that would be really good. Or you can email me and then we talk. I appreciate you. You're saying uh -huh, that how do you deal with you being elevated and everybody else in the family not doing well? How do you deal with that? Them dealing with you or you dealing with them? I guess it could go both ways. Okay, how do you deal with them? Number one, you have to understand you're not Jesus. Hmm. So you can't help everyone. Did you hear what I said? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? <laughs> God is good. You are not Jesus. The biggest mistake that we make, we try to help everybody. You can't. Bishop Obednego, we honor you, sir. Prophet, God bless you. So you hear what I'm saying? You are not God. The biggest, wisdom that the, the biggest wisdom you can have is let God be God. Mm. You see, so many people have a different perspective on your success. They don't understand if they don't let you completely rise, you cannot elevate them. Mm -hmm. So while your rocket is still taking off, you cannot add more weight. Right. If they add more weight, then it will not fly. Mm. Is this making sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. It would be impossible for you to fly to get to where God wants you to get to. Yes. It would be impossible. So the key is to encourage you to go high, not to take from you, but to push you. So you need to understand that right now they may not understand you. They may think you're keeping from them. It is okay what they think now in the short term, but in the long term, when you get to where God wants you to get to, you can be of help to them. Amen. So whether they think you're not helping them, you're not coming through for them, it doesn't matter. That's fine. You're not God. Hmm. They should call on Jesus, not you. Wow. It sounds brutal, but it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Because family can also be a snare that the devil can use. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Any other one? Did I answer you? Amen. Did I? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, let's give to God and then I'll take more questions and then we'll be done. Go to prophetlovey.com now. Get a sacrifice that means something to you. Amen. Let it cost you to give something to God. Mm -hmm. And then when we come back, uh, we'll continue into deeper things. Amen. Go quickly and then we'll be back. Buddy, let's be, let's, uh, is there one or two more questions and then we go into it and then we, uh, we finish. Any other questions? Any other questions? Can everybody hear me? Okay. I tell you, Revelation Church, we know how to have church. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah, that's perfect. Revelation Church, we know how to have uh, church. Okay, yes. let's get two great questions and then we can pray. To do with the subject, people. To do with the subject. And, to and tonight we'll have our Zoom prayer uh, time. So make sure you're looking on Facebook because we're going to have it on. Blessings. Let's hear the questions. Okay, somebody on YouTube asked a good question. Roshan, yes. I'm looking for Roshan. Uh, Papa, what if everyone in your family seems to be advancing, but you're not? Mm -hmm. Even though you've tried the exact same route that they have, it just doesn't work. I need help. You are not your family. Oh, my gosh. Mm, if you're unique, why would the way that works for others work for you? Wow. So when God calls you to be different, my path with my brothers is completely different. So many a times we think that those who are doing a certain thing, a certain way are succeeding, it means we need to do the same thing. No, it doesn't mean that. Our paths are completely different. So what was good for another may be bad for you, and what is bad for you will be good for another. That's a good question, though. I like that. Stop comparing yourself, people. Don't compare yourself. Mm -hmm. Learn from everyone, but do what God wants you to do. Any other one? Yes. Elijah Gael Kianzangoani mm -hmm. asked, Papa, how can we pray slash help family members who are holding on to the pain they have experienced? You can't. You can only encourage them, but ultimately you, they are the ones who have to deal with it. You see, when you're going through pain, nobody can lift it. It's only the Holy Spirit that can comfort you. Mm. You can pray for the comfort of the Spirit, but you can't do anything about it. It will be ultimately up to them. I don't know if I answered somebody. You can encourage them and show them the way that they need to get close to God. But they may not listen to you. They may listen to you. But that's completely up to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Listening. But there's nothing you can do about it. Mm -hmm. Because everybody's at a different place. And what God requires of one, he doesn't require of another. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when you're trying to... When you are trying to, to help people in the process, you may be obstructing what God wants. Wow. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Another one? Mm, Reina Dilla asked, how do we trade in our pain for elevation in the spirit? Sorry, I can't hear you. How do we trade in our pain for elevation? Or mm, mm, keep going. Or do we just learn the lesson for ourselves and others? Let me explain to you how it works. When you are in pain, 
everything has you you everything that costs something has already been given so whatever you say before god will come from a genuine place versus somebody who has no pain mm. i don't know if it's making sense okay yeah. you see somebody who is hurting jesus was being insulted is on the cross and he looks at somebody and says oh father forgive them they don't know what they're doing that prayer is more powerful than you being rejoicing and everything and somebody is talking about you but you are enjoying and you say father forgive them they don't know anything that they are they don't know what they are doing mm -hmm. nothing is costing you to pray that prayer mm -hmm. so when it is already taxing on you you are in pain and you say father i love you father you are the best thing that has ever happened to me father without you i am nothing Oh Lord having you is better than having anything else. Your prayer has more value spiritually because it has cost you yeah. to pray that prayer. Everything in the flesh says denounce God, but everything in your heart is saying God is everything. Right. Though I feel pain, I still love him. Your prayer has more value. That is where the trade is. Mm -hmm. That is why prayer without a sacrifice doesn't move God because God is not only listening to the prayer. God is looking for the scent. Right. What is the sacrifice? It's good. There is no spiritual transaction that happens without a sacrifice, never. Okay, one last one and we are done. Mm, this is good actually. Someone mm. said, "How do you break free a uh, Jane M Mwangi asked, how do you break free from the spirit of delay when you can discern that indeed God has already released your breakthrough and healing? Well, it depends. Uh, you see, you sensing and knowing are two different things. I'm not sensing, saying sensing is wrong. Mm -hmm. If God releases you, there is, when Jesus says yes, no demon can say no. Amen. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that. Uh, Bishop Arke, am I saying something? Mm -hmm. Ah, when Jesus says you are approved, there is nobody Amen. who can fight you on it. Amen. Even the witch in your village, your uncle, your brother, your <laughs> sister, even you yourself, you cannot stop yourself Amen. from succeeding when God says yes. It's impossible. Wow. Amen. So delay is not always a spirit of delay. Mm. Remember, spirits plague on your ignorance. Hmm. Let me ask you, is the spirit of poverty stealing money from you or is the spirit of poverty giving you a mindset to believe that you can't succeed? Wow. The spirit of poverty will create laziness in you, will create complaining in you. It will give you a perspective that you will never be more than enough. You are just comfortable here. The spirit of delay has no ability to take resources from you. Only God has the ability to take mm. and has the ability to give. I wish somebody could hear that. That will liberate you immediately if you know what I'm saying. Amen. No one can contend with God. So the question is, have I learned the lesson? Because sometimes God is the one delaying you because if you go ahead, you will die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Lord, give me a billion. God says, I can give you a billion. But if I give it to you now, what are you going to do? Some people will become like the prodigal son. I don't know if somebody can hear me. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, somebody said, would you consider it pain if you're advancing very rapidly and then all of a sudden you become stagnant? Yes, because everybody's pain is different. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It can be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Spirits only know how to do one thing. You're ignorant, they will finish you. Mm. Well. Hallelujah. How do I know it's an attack or training? I think I already answered that. Mm -hmm. You see, the point is this. Whether, it is whether you're walking or God with God or outside of God, demons will attack you, period. Mm -hmm. 
The good news is that all things work for your good. Amen. The question you should ask yourself, am I in Christ? Because if I am in Christ, no weapon formed against me will prosper. Amen. Mm -hmm. They can form the weapon, but it will not do anything to me. So all these things have to be put in place. Because if you don't know them, you are affected. Do not be ignorant of this devil's devices. Well, let's pray. Father, I bless everybody that is watching and I pray that no matter where they are, Father, I pray that you bless them, touch them, increase them, transform their life, even unto your glory. Continue to forgive us, cleanse us, and cause us to chase after you more than we have ever done. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, comfort those who are going through pain. Cause their eyes to open to see exactly what you're doing in us, through us, and for us. Amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.